Hey everybody, what's going on? Jimmy is Promo here back again with another awesome video. And in today's video, we will be talking about the top 10 hidden features for the Galaxy S10 series. But this will also work if you have another Samsung phone that was upgraded to Android 9, which brought you the One UI update. Now, the first feature that I want to talk about today is one that is called Smart Orientation. Now, usually when you have your phone set up, you probably have this one turned on for auto rotate. But one of the things that One UI Update brought you, which is also already part of the Galaxy S10 series, is something called Smart Orientation. So when you have this one set up to where it's only locked on portrait, if you are holding your phone and then you rotate the phone, you'll see a small icon on the very bottom right hand side. So as example, let's say that we go inside of the YouTube application. Let's say that we were watching YouTube, I'm holding onto it. What'll happen is that when I rotate the phone, it does not rotate with me, but you see that small icon on the top right. Now I can actually manually have it rotate without it having to always be locked into place. Now again, one more time, if we do put it back over into portrait, you can see that small icon down there again, and it'll also pop up. So it's one of those nice things that you can still rotate your phone without having to go through the settings of the very top, but having the auto rotate turned off because sometimes when this is turned on, it rotates on you when you lay in bed, uh, when you're laying on the couch, you're, you still want it to be in portrait mode. Uh, but once you lay down, the phone kind of rotates with you. And so then this kind of happens and you don't really want it to. So it's really nice to have that small little icon on the very bottom right hand side. Now, the next thing I do want to talk about is going to be inside of the camera. So a lot of times you go inside of your camera and you want to reshoot another either video or super slow-mo, but every time that you open up your camera application, it goes right back over into the stock shooting mode, which is set up as photo. So as example, let's say you go over into super slow motion, you do your super slow-mo, you hit on your home button, maybe you got out of that application, uh, but then again, something else really cool pops up, you wanna hit it in super slow motion again. When you open up the camera, it goes right back over into photo. So on the top left-hand side, you go inside of settings, you'll scroll down to where it's gonna say the camera modes. Now inside of camera modes, you have this option here called keep using last mode. So let's try this one again. This time let's do live focus. A lot of pictures you take, you're focusing on your subject, you took the image, you got out of it, Maybe you even closed out of the application, but then another opportunity arises. You wanna take another image inside of Live Focus, and there you go. This is a simple way to go right back over into what you've already done. So if you're somebody who always uses the pro mode and sick and tired of always switching it to the pro mode, this is one of the ways to keep it there. Um, same thing if you do a lot more videos than taking photos, it's a way you can always keep it to where it'll open up on video and not photos. Hidden feature number three, we'll head right back inside of the camera, and this is called floating shutter button. Now there is a setting inside of the settings of the camera that you can turn on the floating shutter button, but let's just say that you're not really able to go through the settings at the moment. You're trying to get a awkward photo being taken. You only have one hand and it's kind of a little awkward and you're not really able to hit on that shutter button right there. Well, if you press and hold for just a hot second and then you're able to move it up, this is going to be now your floating shutter button. So if you need to take a picture, but it's easy to hold onto the phone like this so just so you can tap on that shutter button now you're able to take a picture that way so again it's really nice that you're able to pretty much activate a little setting without going through the settings um, just by doing a, a quick uh, little drag and drop and move that little shutter button somewhere else um, and then you'd be able to place it right back into place now this next feature i'm going to stay inside of the camera this was actually number 10 but i want to bring it a little bit sooner because it's super important and i just found this out uh, so let's just say that you wanted to take a picture uh, but you only have one hand you have your one thumb to take the picture but you have to zoom in so instead of you trying to maybe try to double tap or go to this you know ultra wide and and regular camera and then the two times zoom uh, really what you're able to do is where you see those trees if you press and hold then you're able to zoom in this way. So this way, if you're trying to do a pinch to zoom, maybe you're at a baseball game, uh, you're sitting just a little bit further away, uh, but you can only take a picture with your thumb because maybe your other hand is holding a beer. What you need to do is just press and hold. Then you'd be able to, I would say, I would suggest moving your thumb all the way to the right. Now you can make it all the way up to that 10 time zoom. So you can see that 10 time right there. I'm doing it all with just one thumb. 
So really, I guess, uh, without repeating myself too many times, the trick to this one is not really just pressing holding. I would say move your thumb all the way to the right hand side first. So you can go all the way to that times 10. Because if you don't move it over to the right first, then you will probably only go to eight times. Hidden feature number five is setting up a video wallpaper for your lock screen. Now, the nice thing about the Samsung One UI update is that it allows you to do a user generated video for your lock screen. But one of the best ways to do this is going inside of your gallery and swiping down, clicking on videos, and now it shows you all of the videos that you're able to use. So let's just say that we wanna go through and choose one that's pretty cool. I'm gonna go down to one of these fire videos. So this one is a 11 second video, but you're able to do a video up to 15 seconds. So when you find the video that you would like to use, if it's 15 seconds, you know, either above or below, doesn't matter. Just go to the very top, go to set as wallpaper. It states right here, up to 15 seconds of the video will be shown. So if it is over 15, you just wanna go through edit and choose where within side of that video you would like to have have your wallpaper so let's just say that i only want maybe half of this video then when i hit on done um, it's saving the video now and now this could be the uh, wallpaper that i'm able to use so now we have it set up as the wallpaper for the lock screen so now when we head up over here you'd be able to check this thing out and it actually looks pretty sweet Hidden feature number six is changing the order of your gallery. So once you open up your gallery, uh, one of the nice things that you are able to do is a pinch to zoom to change the size of your, your albums and everything else. Uh, so you can go into pretty much a list view or one of these, uh, but let's say that you would like to maybe move your screenshots maybe a little bit further ahead. So it's one of the first things that you see. And then maybe your collages, uh, you can take these ones on down this way. Um, so really, if you'd like to change the order of your albums, you're able to do that, which is pretty sweet. Um, and also too, if there's any of these that you need to either combine or delete, you can do that as well. So if I tap here, tap here, I can either uh, group them together or I can delete both of them at the same time. So it gives the ability of altering and changing all of the different orders of the albums, merging them together or deleting anything in bulk. Hidden feature number seven is playing with the home button and the ability of scrolling between all of your recent applications. Now, this is something that I randomly just saw that was either just added, maybe brought in with a security update or something. Um, a lot of the times I'm actually using GoodLock 2019, so I don't know when this was added, but this is something brand new for me, and I hope it's brand new for you. So if you are using GoodLock 2019, disable that thing just for a little bit for that navigation bar on the bottom and go into the navigation button buttons and so if you go through your settings and you check out your navigation let's say that we go through the settings here um, you're able to go through if you like it to be with the uh, gestures or if you have the navigation buttons so this one is for the navigation buttons with that home button recents and back and again you are able to change these if you're left-handed or if you're used to lg or pixel um, but anyways this is the way that i usually have mine set up i like the back button since i am right-handed makes it super simple and easy but what you're able to do is if you press and hold on home for just a second um, if you press for too long google will open up so again if you press and hold uh, google will open up but if you press and hold just for a second and then you use it as a slide moving to the right this will pop up the screen of all of your recent applications that you can open something up extremely fast so instead of you going inside of recent apps and then scrolling through and going through and opening these things up uh, you are able to press and hold really quick and then you're able to use it as a slider going through all of your different windows so I'm sorry if I kind of repeated myself on that one it was actually really fun um, I've never noticed that before um, until last night so let me know if you've known about it before today Day. Hidden feature number eight is when you're inside of Chrome and you want to switch between all your different tabs. Instead of hitting the tab on the top right hand side and then you scroll through and going through all the different tabs and everything else, uh, one of the nice things that you are able to do is if you just swipe on the very top. So where you see the uh, very top for the URL, if you swipe it left, it'll go back a tab and then it'll go all the way back until you see your very first tab that you've opened up. And then if you swipe it on the top, going to the right hand side, it's going to open up all the rest. So it's one of those short little uh, uh, shortcuts that you're able to just do a simple swipe instead of going into the whole screen to choose which tab of Chrome you would like to use. 
Hidden feature number nine is talking about the quick menu settings where all of the text is clickable. So a lot of people usually just click on the icon to turn things on and, and turn things off and kind of toggle things. So you can see that that rotate was still turned on. So I'm gonna turn that one back off. Uh, and so with this flashlight one, for example, if you click on the text, this is where you can change the volume or I should say the level of how bright you want it. So if you want to not wake somebody up but you need a little bit of light, put it on level one and every time you turn it on, it'll be level one. So I usually keep mine at a level three. Uh, if you need a little bit more brightness, put it to level five. Uh, but also the fun thing too, is that if you go through all the rest of these, you'll notice that some of them won't really be able to do those quick, fast toggle settings. You have to go to the full details, but go through some of these, play around, see which one of these quick uh, settings is available when you click on the words. So navigation, you can switch it really fast, go into full screen gestures or the navigation buttons. Uh, also for portrait, you can choose when you want it to do the auto rotate. If you want it to only happen on the home screen or if you you only want it to happen on the lock screen. Um, you can set up to where it does it in the home screen and a voice call screen. So I have mine set up for the home screen so this way it can rotate that way. Uh, but it's just kind of go through some of these here and touch on the clickable words, the text, and see the quick, fast ways of changing things. So with this one, it can show as scheduled. So then this way with my always on display will, sh will show from 7 a.m. until basically midnight or I have mine to set up as tap to show, which is something that's amazing. That is a part of the One UI update that this way when you wanna open up your uh, always on display, do a simple tap of the screen. And then also too, inside of the camera, this is hidden to feature number 10, is you are able to go through the settings uh, when you go down into those shooting modes, as I've shown from before with uh, keep using of the last mode, this is where you can edit those modes. If there's any of these you want on or off, or if you like to rearrange, you are able to get inside of that menu really fast just by pressing and holding on any of those shooting modes. When you press and hold on any of those shooting modes, this is where you can turn on or off that old version of slow motion. Um, also too, if you want your super slow mode to be a little bit closer to where a photo is, you're able to do that. But I do shoot a lot of video, so I want it to be uh, set up right after photo. And maybe hyperlapse, maybe if hyperlapse is something that you do all the time, you can put it right over here. But I use live focus a ton, and I also use actually pro mode a little bit more than hyperlapse. So where mine was set up was perfectly fine. So you are able to edit your shooting modes. You can turn them on, you can turn them off, you can disable them, you can deselect them, you can rearrange them just by pressing and holding on any of these shooting modes. So this was the 10 hidden features on the Galaxy S10 series, which will again also work with any other Samsung phone running Android 9, which brought the One UI update. I hope that you guys have liked this video. If you guys did, please give this thing a huge thumbs up. You can also hit on subscribe right over here. Hit this little bottom red circle over here. Uh, you can subscribe that way. Share this video with your friends and family and social media sites, and I'll see you guys later.